Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of The Change Physician. I'm your host, Dr. Kevin Kukaro, with my fantastic co-host, Dr. Melissa Cady, and today's guest, Dr. Christopher Liu. Dr. Liu is an orthopedic surgeon by, by training, um, but has been doing a lot of interesting things both in and out of the clinical space, and he's here today to tell us his physician journey. So Chris, great to have you on the show today. Hey guys, thanks for having me on the show, and I'm really happy to be on here. Thanks for inviting me. Absolutely. All right. And let's go to the beginning. We always want to start at the beginning. And so that's, well, why in the world did you even choose to go into medicine? So, uh, well, I grew up in uh, very humble circumstances and um, I didn't really have a lot. So um, my parents were first generation immigrants. So they encouraged me and my brother to pursue careers as medical doctors, um, the status, the prestige, career stability, income. And so uh, I grew up on the cusp of the uh, Gen X and millennials. So back then we were operating under industrial age paradigms. So the key to success back then was to get a very stable, high paying job career profession. So um, I was always good at math and science and I was good at taking tests. So medicine was the natural progression uh, to fulfill that career dream and path from my parents. And so um, with that, when you went into medical school, then did you find anything shocking about medical education or were you like, oh, this is easy or, or, or was there any conflict? Cause you know, sometimes the first two years as compared to the last two clinical years, there's some discrepancy there. So what were your experiences during medical school? Yeah. So, uh, I, I actually, I got into my first choice of medical school. I went to uh, Baylor for medical school. Um, I was part of the MD PhD program and, um, it was there. I really enjoyed my first two years of clinical uh, medicine the, with the basic sciences and with the clinical sciences. Um, I was, like I said, I was good at taking tests. So it was actually um, a, uh, a um, accelerated uh, environment of undergraduate. So you basically went to class, you studied and you got good grades. I really enjoyed the academic environment. I loved being around smart, intelligent, very motivated, hardworking individuals. Um, but one thing I noticed was that um, when I went into clinicals, the, uh, there's a disconnect between the actual practice of medicine and the actual learning of medicine. So, and um, part of that was uh, part of the, the way our healthcare system is structured with insurance, with um, preventing malpractice, with outcomes. Um, all of that was not taught in medical school. So I saw a lot of um, residents, attendings, as well as um, administrators and staff really not enjoy their careers because they had uh, this extra burden of administrative duties. Um, they always had to worry about getting sued. Um, and it started to be more and more of a, um, uh, let's try and um, mitigate and really uh, ideas such as career burnout, uh, the physician depression, suicide, those were coming into the um, realm. The other thing I realized in medical school was that no, no, uh, emphasis was on finances. So the idea was that you went to medical school, uh, you became a, um, you know, well-paid internist, surgeon, um, and, or hospitalist. And that was, you know, that was it. You had your income, but they never told you what to do with the income, you know, uh, how to decrease taxes, uh, how to convert some of that earned income into passive income. Uh, none of that was taught. And, you know, the thinking back then was, you know, just take out student loan debt to finance your education. And uh, so that was a big thing because back then it was just like, oh, if you, uh, if you need money, just take out student loans. Uh, now we're seeing the effects and uh, actually that's not the wisest choice to have during these days because uh, the cost of medical education, cost of living, et cetera, is, is uh, increasing at a great rate. So those were the two things that I really uh, noticed. So you're in residency or you're in medical school and you're kind of seeing this discrepancy between, you know, definitely through the, the first two years and then the, the practice of medicine, which is tends to be a lot different than what we think. Uh -huh. uh, so why did you pick your residency then? Or how did you pick your residency knowing mm -hmm. this complex interplay? Because if you're looking at something with risk mitigation and practice, uh -huh. what we practice as compared to what the evidence shows, orthopedics is is in a challenging spot right there. So why did you choose orthopedic surgery? 
Yeah. So let me uh, back up before that, because uh, I did a PhD in between my um, basic science and clinical years as part of the MD PhD program. And uh, that's where I, I did my PhD at, at Rice University in bioengineering. And uh, Rice University was a hub for uh, Center for Entrepreneurship, where they discovered nanotechnology, the buckyball, um, molecular imaging, all of these new technologies were being discovered and developed at Rice. So they had a center for entrepreneurship. So it was almost like living in uh, San Francisco, if you're like in technology. Um, so it was, it was very entrepreneurial. So I had four years of uh, graduate school. So I had four years to learn about finances, investing, raising funds, real estate, stocks, and options. And I started two companies then. And uh, by then I was generating enough passive income on the side such that, um, you know, graduating from medical school and going to residency was actually optional for me. Nevertheless, uh, I couldn't throw away a medical education, um, you know, for my parents, for my uh, mentors, for my colleagues. And so I sought a lot of advice and the prevailing advice was to um, go into residency, complete residency, do a fellowship, get board certified. And after that, you could pursue your dreams. Uh, you know, that, <laughs> you know, that's kind of outdated advice right now. And looking back, I, you know, I wish I had sought more entrepreneurship mentors, but nevertheless, I finished medical school, uh, got into residency. And um, so that taught me a lot of skill sets, uh, how does, how the real world works, how to survive in the real world, and how to make and market yourself as a, as a brand label. Um, so that was one thing. Um, the reason why I got in, I chose orthopedics was one is um, I'm very, uh, I, I don't like nonsense. So I'm very straightforward. Um, I like the immediacy. I like the functionality. I like um, getting people up and functional right then and there. And I don't like a lot of delays. So I have a very surgeon type mentality. Also, you know, Orthopedics is very high paying, it's well paying. So that's another reason why I chose that specialty. Um, so then I got into orthopedics, but, but you know, realized that uh, you know, it's gonna be a long six years haul. So I really had to, I had to choose between whether I would pursue my passions as an entrepreneur and start and build my brand and company, or if I would have to uh, spend six years completing residency and fellowship and just be, you know, not really pursuing my dreams and passions. Um, and I didn't want to be at the end of my life saying I never took a chance and um, that uh, I didn't want to live my life with regret. So that's why I took a leap of faith my second year. Uh, that was the day that Lehman Brothers filed for bankruptcy. I took a leap of faith and uh, turned in my keys, badge and pager, set out to be a full-time entrepreneur. And that was the best decision I've ever made. And I've never looked back since. And as they say, the rest is history. Mm. Wow. So you, you did, you basically, is it two years into, or, so let me just, I just want to understand. So you did like two years with the first two years of, of medical school and then the four years of the PhD type work and then the last two years of the medical school training and then two mm -hmm. years of orthopedic. Yes. Yeah, I, okay. I, uh, I matched into orthopedic surgery. I didn't necessarily match into my first choice program. Um, so that was, that may have been part of it, but, um, you know, nevertheless, I got into the program, but I realized that um, it really, it was going to be, it was, I wasn't really um, uh, harnessing my skill sets or my passions. And I was really, it was better, uh, my time was better spent pursuing my own dreams and passions. So, and I'll give you an example, because, uh, you know, I resigned in 2008 and, from 2008 to 2016, I was a full-time entrepreneur. I started investing in single families. And by 2016, I had amassed a um, significant um, financial asset such that I would never need to work for anybody or I would never need to depend on a job or you know, things such as social security, pensions. And um, you know, I could pretty much do whatever I wanted uh, as I pleased with the re for the rest of my life. So yeah, just, just for those listening, you said you invested in single families. I'm assuming single family homes, yes. um, real estate is what you were referring to, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Real estate. Yes. Gotcha. So, yeah. Yeah. So what did your, your family, um, and your, 
your hemming and hawing of trying to do what you want to do and feeling uh-huh. compelled to keep people happy like at what point did you finally just come to terms with things yeah so um i went through a lot of turmoil and a lot of um dysfunction uh a, because at that time it was very unheard of for somebody to just uh, jump ship and to go out and pursue their passions and their dreams. Everybody thought, you know, something had happened or, you know, some, you know, something. And uh, really, it was just I wanted to go out and pursue my dreams. And uh, so I actually, uh, I didn't. I was estranged from my family for two years. You know, even though we lived an hour away apart. And those two years, I was um, doing a lot of education. I was doing a lot of investing, um, a lot of networking. So those two years, I was plotting my comeback uh, in 2016. So um, nevertheless, you know, as they as they say, once you achieve a level of success, then people, you know, eventually come to your side. But at that time, you know, everybody thought I was a failure, that um, that I had uh, gone crazy, and uh, you know that sort of thing. So, but uh, like you know, it's very interesting when it's very interesting when you, when you start out something, there's going to be the naysayers, the haters, uh, the jealous people and the people who don't think you can do it. And then at the end, when you do make it, it's like, Oh, I knew you could, I knew, I knew you could do it. You know, Oh, I should have believed in you. You know, that sort of thing. It's just, yeah. so, you, um, so I really had to, um, be more intentional and more, uh, set more boundaries and set more, um, be more uh, mindful about who I associated myself with and, you know, what sort of beliefs and ideals, because in these days, you really have a lot more opportunities um, compared to in the past where you had to follow traditional pathways. So now you have, uh, you know, a lot of different options to succeed. Um, You know, medicine is one way, but, you know, there's a lot of other ways that you can be more successful as well. Yeah, just thinking about those two years where you're really kind of isolated by yourself. And I I think for people listening that anytime we do a a pivot in our life that Uh um, sometimes we have support and sometimes we don't. And I guess my question to you for the benefit of others is what helped you get through those two years or what was your support? Or if you didn't have support, how did you keep yourself like from totally losing it? (laughs) Uh, yeah, those were those were some rough years because, yeah. um, but uh, really, I drew a lot of solace from uh, books. So mm-hmm. you know, I I, um, I read a lot of uh, inspirational books from from Steve Jobs. I read a lot mm-hmm. about uh, uh, Bill Gates, uh, Michael Dell, all of these entrepreneurs who had started from nothing and created uh, you know billions and created massive value for the entire world and who, you know, changed the face of industry. So these, these were the people I looked up to um, and that I admired. So that's how I did it. Um, a lot of uh, exercise, meditation. Uh, uh, I also did a lot of networking. So I started networking with more entrepreneurial minded individuals. Um, mm-hmm. And I noticed that entrepreneurs are more, uh, they, they mitigate risk and they view life as more um, different journey and more options whereas you know those in the medical profession uh, (laughs) view life as a straight path so you know it's it was more just surrounding myself with the right people Uh, my wife was very supportive as well Um, and uh, so but uh, like I said as you come to terms with yourself you start to grow into yourself and you start to um, become yourself so yeah yeah well good for you did you feel like you were going to be able to be successful during those times or was there a lot of creeping doubt? Yeah. Oh, uh, well, it was, le- it was more like I was, for example, the day I turned in my keys, badge and pager, I left the hospital and I had uh, palpitations yeah. and I had shortness of breath and it wasn't, um, it, part of it was fear, but part of it was excitement. And it was also cause I had taken that first step, uh, you know, towards, you know, reclaiming my life and, um, living, building a life based on my own values and core beliefs. Mm. Um, so, uh, and I'm happy to answer questions from there as well. Yeah. What, yeah. what are those core beliefs? Sorry. Yeah. So, um, well, one is, uh, one is you have to, uh, one is faith. So a lot of times, uh, with, um, with the medical profession, you know, we have to have concrete science evidence data before we can make it, 
a decision. In business, in entrepreneurship, you have to have um, you have to be able to deal with risk, uncertainty, um, and also you have to be able to uh, be able to execute in with incomplete data. So that takes a lot of faith. So faith in you know as um, you view. Uh, the situation as a pro problem to be solved as a journey um, and not something, you know, where you, uh, it's not a success, it's not a, a success or failure type mentality. So I think Carol Dweck talks about growth versus fixed mindset. So, so one of its is also a growth mindset. Uh, the other core belief is that um, everything works out in the end. So, you know, what you're going through, May not, you know, it can be stressful. Can it can be a lot of uncertainty, especially during these this pandemic. Um, so you have to really ask yourself what is what is life trying to bring to you? What is life trying to teach you? And how can you use that and apply it so that you can grow and move forward? So um, that was the, that one as well. And then also just uh, very um, in terms of intention. So you sort of. Um, as you break away from the herd, you'll start to see that um, you, you know, we're, all of us, we operate under social conditioning, which, you know, keeps us in line, you know, we follow the law, but sometimes you have to break out of that uh, mode of thinking uh, so that you can come into your own and you can create the value and achieve the, your, your potential and the destiny that you were put on earth here for. Yeah. So I want to go back to 2008. You you turn in your badge and yeah. you're leaving you're leaving residency. Yeah. Which is a which is a big deal. Yeah. So what were you, were you already doing investing in single family homes at that time or mm -hmm. or did you just charge out into the world and and <laughs> and say I'm going to do this? Like what was because that's a big step, you know. Yeah. And and so I'm just kind of kind of did you have like some sort of safety net that you were already proceeding in? Or mm -hmm. were, were you just like, I'm going to do this and uh, yeah. kind of step off the cliff? Yeah, I, uh, I actually started preparing in 2000. So that uh, 2000 uh, was my first when I first started medical school. And up to 2007, I was already preparing. I was learning about finances. Um, I was reading books about investing. So by the, I graduated from medical school in, at the age of 29. And at the age of 29, I was able to generate uh, enough income. I was able to generate um, uh, low low six figure income without needing a job. So I also had uh, two investment properties, and I had a very um, uh, nice portfolio of, of stocks. So I, I you know I had that to fall back on. But like I said, uh, in two thousand eight, it still takes a lot. It still took a lot of um, uh, a leap of faith. It's all, um, and I describe it almost like skydiving where you're you know you you know you everything is going to be okay but you're standing at the you know at the edge of the plane and you know you have to take that leap so there's still that element of fear you know uncertainty you know you know oh my gosh what a, um you know i'm leaving a very stable career for a more uncertain path in future well and particularly in 2008 when you're in the yeah. middle of the housing crisis by the end of 2008 it crashed uh -huh. And the stock market bottoms out in March of 2009. That's not yeah. what you call an idea scenario to go exactly. off on your own. Yeah, exactly. So. Um, where you, yeah, exactly. In my, my viewpoint in 2008 was when everybody was running scared, um, you know, the, the uh, market was cr crashing um, and, you know, real estate was crashing. My thinking was that, oh, this is an opportunity because, uh, you know, at some point, real estate prices are going to bottom out at some point the uh, the stock stock market is going to bottom out and so i just i was biding my time i was waiting i was um uh researching and i was educating myself so i'll give you another example is um so the bull market the current bull market that we're in uh started in 2009 and i you know i i got in a little bit after the um i think it was march of 2009 which was when the bull market the current bull market started so like I said, it was, for me, it was more um, opportunity rather than the risk. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, um, you know, it looks like aside from real estate and uh, these other investment opportunities you're, you're talking about, there's other things you've kind of evolved your, 
and entrepreneurial self into? Do you mind going into some of these other endeavors? Yeah, sure. So um, I so I retired in 2016, and then um, back then it was uh, I took a year off to travel the world and to mm-hmm. contemplate life and what was the next phase. Um, I didn't want to amass all this wealth for myself and not uh, give back and contribute. So I, I decided, you know, what's the best way to uh, instead of uh, creating financial independence and freedom for myself and my family, but how to now leave a legacy. So I started my consulting company in 2017, uh, and that encompasses healthcare, IT consulting. Um, I'm a keynote speaker. I've written four Amazon books. I've had my own career success program. I mentor and coach a lot of physicians, um, especially during this time, uh, the pandemic. I've been coaching a lot of physicians um, who, you know, who are looking to transition and get out of the, the medical profession. Um, so, and that's been my passion now. So I, you know, I speak, I uh, just finished keynote last week um, and I'm now I'm, everything is virtual webinar online. And um, that's how I contribute to um, leave a legacy and, and give back. Yeah. Oh, well, that, I'm sorry, Kevin, go ahead. No, go, no, go ahead. Go ahead, Mavis, I'm sorry. No, no, I was just, I was just kind of curious. It seemed like um, the physician consultant thing has been a, a more recent, at least on LinkedIn, I see, I see you posted the date for September of this year for the physician consultant and out of Seattle. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that was actually a, that, that was actually a great um, uh, consulting project. So that, that's a, that was a five week consulting project. It was with Seattle Children's Hospital and um, one of my one of my passions is um, is in technology, but in terms of how it uh, how it applies to um, healthcare, because uh, I think the biggest two biggest uh, fields of innovation um, in our world today are in education and healthcare. So those are two um, industries where we need a lot of upgrading and and, um, and modernization in our into the current times that we're in. So, um, and right now what's happening is uh, a lot of hospitals are transitioning into the digital era from, uh, from the past. And that's, that's a huge transition. So one of my passions is to, um, is to help uh, institutions transition in the most efficient, effective, and seamless way possible. And so that goes a lot with um, understanding how the um, IT infrastructure works, working with um, physicians, surgeons, anesthesia, and nurses, uh, both in terms of educating as well as communication and working on the systems and processes so that they can transition into the uh, digital era. Yeah, definitely much needed. Kevin, yeah. did you have anything uh, else to ask? Because um, no. I wanted him to share what he, where he's at. Yeah, so why don't you let everybody know where they can find you and what's the best way to contact you, Chris? Sure. Um, I'm on LinkedIn, so um, you can check me out. Check me out, uh, Christopher H. Liu, MD, PhD. Um, I'm actually one of the Board Vitals top 50 MDs to follow on Instagram. So you can find me at Dr. Chris Liu, MD, PhD. Uh, my four books are on Amazon. Um, and then you can reach me um, uh, email at Christopher Liu, MD, PhD at gmail.com. But uh, like I said, I'm I'm on Facebook as well. So any one of those means that uh, you'll, you'll be able to reach me. Do you mind just pitching? Uh, what are the types of books that you have on Amazon? Oh, so I have four books. So one, my, I recommend uh, for you no know, introduct introductory readers, uh, my first book, which is my autobiography. Uh, it'll go more in depth and detail into our discussion that we had today. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's how I quit my lucrative medical career and achieve financial freedom using real estate. And then my next three books are about the different income streams that I developed and created for myself. So one of them is focused on stocks and options. Uh, this, the third one is about consulting. And then that's been the most popular. And then I have another um, book on how to become a writer as well. And then uh, I have monthly um, uh, boot camp masterminds as well as upcoming workshops as well. So, you know, you can contact me to... Um, to ask me about those, um, and they're in, they're both in um, consulting, writing, and public speaking, so. Okay, and is there a, is there a website that takes you to some of those courses, or is it just directly by contacting you? 
Uh, oh, I, well, I have a, uh, they can, best thing is to contact me and I have a link and then um, I'll direct them. But I also have a link tree as well that I'll oh, okay. send to you as well. Yeah, send us the link tree. That'd be easier. Yeah, yeah, that has, that has everything, everything. In, whatever you're interested in. Okay, cool. Great. Wonderful. Why don't you take us out there, Melissa? I got it. All <laughs> right. Well, uh, again, uh, very clearly stated that, uh, you know, you can have your, your, the horizon might seem like you're aimed at something in particular and you get in the middle of it and you realize that there's so much more out there. And especially when you get in touch with who you are and not just what the world wants to make you out to be. And so um, congrats to you for, for finding that, that avenue that fulfills your soul and, and, and makes you feel like you're excited and joyful to get up the next day and, and do what you love doing. So for those listening out there, I'm Melissa Cady with the Change Physician podcast and community with my awesome co-host, Dr. Kevin Kakaro, and our wonderful guest, Dr. Christopher or Chris Liu, who is an MD, PhD. Thank you so much uh, for being with us today, Dr. Liu. Thanks so much. I enjoyed having our time on the show and I wish you guys the best. Thank right. you so much. Yeah. For everyone out there, take care. <laughs>